the meeting place for the roundup today was on the border of Nevada and Utah, uh, <laughs> which also borders the time zone difference. So we are an hour behind the caravan. Luckily, we have a, a pin that was dropped from the last roundup in the HMA, so we're hoping they're around the same area and we're gonna try to find them. We're out in the Sulphur HMA right now on public lands, and now we see a white truck off in the distance, which is usually a good sign that we're close. Go, baby, go. Alone. Because it's her got taken. He's a straggler. Sometimes they miss one. Yeah, we're for sure in the right place, you guys. A total of 500 will be removed when it's all said and done. They're trying to get to the appropriate management level that the BLM sets for every herd management area. That just means an arbitrary number of how many they think the, the, the land can sustain. It takes into account compensation for other users such as livestock and extractive, like mining. The comprehensive animal welfare policies that the BLM is supposed to follow at Roundups, they're just internal policies on animal welfare, but that's what we, we use for our complaint letters to make sure that they're treating the animals humanely. Helicopter is doing some pressure and release, not driving them too hard, but he is coming from pretty far away. So they're, they're running for a pretty long while, which is why we're seeing bulls at the back, probably. They're supposed to push the horses at the rate of the slowest animal in the group, but they don't always do that. So we get a lot of foals lagging behind. So seeing the foal at the end of the group is, is pretty common. Exhausted, sometimes they have to be roped to come in. Brand new full. A few months. Couldn't be more than two or three. So today we started out at the same observation point, about three quarters of a mile away. Uh, trap still tucked behind the hills. Uh, the first three runs we had issues with the barbed wire fence. After the first run, I asked the BLM press representative to check on the horse that ran through the fence, got its leg caught. Um, they said it didn't have any marks or anything, so that's good at least. And then they had a second run, another horse went straight through the barbed wire fence. I asked that it be flagged. Um, they relayed that message, but it was not flagged. Third run. They, again, ran horses at the barbed wire fence, and these horses turned and ran down the fence instead of going through it. When we asked for the fence to be flagged and the BLM didn't flag the fence and horses continued to go towards the barbed wire, and just that frustration in the moment of the government not helping the animals that were there to protect, that was probably the hardest part. I kind of knew what to expect, uh, considering what I do for the campaign. They help review the, the footage and write our complaint letters, so I knew what usually happens, but seeing it firsthand was different, especially temporary holding. That was really hard to see the horses that had just been removed, um, kind of processing what had just happened to them. I, I thought it was a, a pretty good commentary that it's on private land with cattle right next to it because that's one of the biggest issues and um, competition for wild horses staying wild here. And here they are captured right next to cows. This work is really important. Going out and witnessing these roundups, most of the time AWHC is the only observer on site which means that these operations are happening completely out of the public's view, which is really dangerous uh, for the horses. People need to see how the horses are being treated so that we can make sure they're here, stay wild, and are treated humanely for generations to come.